of Biotechnica. This is Caroline Green and today in this video I'll be talking about the top 10 mandatory lab skills or the lab techniques that will be in greater demand in the upcoming 10 years. So today's video is very very important if you are going to be a fresher or if you are trying to enter into the field of research then definitely this is a must watch video for all of you. So I'll be talking about the techniques which is very very important after you come out of the college or during your college if you are in you have to learn all this technique. So the first technique that I'm going to talk about is of course going to be the polymerase chain reaction which we call it PCR. So I'm going to talk about the application and let's talk the complete in detail. So PCR everybody had heard of when we uh, even normal people knows about PCR, PCR nowadays just because of COVID. So it is used in cell biology and molecular biology and the main purpose of polymerase chain reaction is to replicate the genetic material in the laboratory conditions and this PCR is used for many many purposes like basic research people started using and applied research it is very much useful in uh, medical field very specifically so if anybody wanted to go in for any of these basic research or applied research like uh, DNA fingerprinting or gene therapy or gen genomic clonings or genotyping or drug discovery or mutation screening or whatever it is then PCR is definitely going to be a wonderful thing this everybody definitely need to know about it the second important technique that I'm going to talk about is gel electrophoresis yes this technique is very important for separating the genetic material. So there are very specifically uh, you can learn age and SDS page. There are different type of gel electrophoresis also. These are basic ones which you need to know. Age is agarose gel electrophoresis and it is for the separation of DNA. So if you want to study about uh, how to separate the DNA, then you can definitely go for agarose gel electrophoresis. SDS is for protein separations very specifically. And gel electrophoresis is used in different cases like uh, DNA fingerprinting to analyze the result of PCR and to analyze even the genes that are associated with a particular illness. And of course, everybody knows agarose gel electrophoresis is used for uh, DNA separation for the paternity testing. And we use uh, evolutionary relationship also in order to find out the genetic similarity between the species and of course antibiotic resistant analysis and to find out a protein or the structure we always perform first SDS page and then we proceed on to the blotting techniques. So the second important thing is gel electrophoresis. The third one is blotting and blotting and gel electrophoresis are very different. Gel electrophoresis is for separating and blotting is for identification of the biomolecules like uh, DNA, RNA and protein and western blotting is for proteins, northern blotting is for uh, RNA and southern blotting is for DNA. So for western blotting what are the uses? So since it's a protein definitely antibody is going to be a major role here. So identifying a specific protein. It can be of antibody, it can be of an antigen or any kind of protein if you want to isolate or identify then we will always perform western blotting. And western blotting is used as a confirmatory test for HIV, hepatitis, mad cow diseases and all this thing. And northern blotting if we have to talk about it, it is for RNA. And the uses are going to be if you want to identify RNA, RNA degradation, RNA splicing, determining RNA half-life it is used for. The next one is southern blotting and southern blotting it is used for gene mapping, uh, gene therapy, analysis of genetic pattern, transgenic studies, forensic studies and evolutionary sciences. Southern blotting is very very helpful for so you can definitely go in for uh, blotting techniques also. The next important one is ELISA. So ELISA enzyme link immunosorbent assay. So I'm going to talk about everything in detail. So in ELISA, we know about different type of ELISA present. Sandwich ELISA are there. So so many types of ELISA are there. So ELISA very specifically is used to detect antigen, which is an immunotechnic. Uh, proteins, antibodies, hormones, everything you can detect. And it is mainly for disease diagnosis. ELISA is for disease diagnosis. And confirmatory test for um, HIV, we used to go in for 
western blotting and preliminary testings will be ELISA. So disease diagnosis for Ebola, pernicious anemia, AIDS, symphysis, Zika virus, carcinoma. So we can definitely go for ELISA technique and you can also find out the antibody antigen in a sample and it is used very specifically in food tech sectors also like to detect any food allergens are there or what and it is also helpful to find out the concentration of the antibody in the virus test. So ELISA is a must technique for all of them who are watching out the video. The second one is going to be gene cloning. So gene cloning is uh, is the one which is actually mainly responsible to find out some uh, assemble uh, recombinant DNA molecules very specifically and it is used in uh, synthesis of hormones nowadays with the help of gene cloning recombinant DNA technology we started producing hormones proteins antibiotics and it is useful in gene therapy and gene library also so first important thing PCR gel electrophoresis blotting technique ELISA and gene cloning. The next important one I'm going to tell you is flow cytometry, which we use to call it as FACS. So fluorescent activated cell sorter, which means if there's going to be a group of cells, we can actually isolate from the group of cells. So cell sorting is the main purpose of flow cytometry. And it's very important method if you are going in for uh, some cell uh, based uh, research. And it's very specifically useful in cell biology and animal or plant tissue culture laboratories. Uh, facts analysis is very much useful for. The next one is fish, which is fluorescence in situ hybridization. Yes, you can see it over here. We are taking a target a DNA, a probe, which is a known sequence is added. And we're going to denature both of them. And we're going to hybridize the strands. And then we are going to detect them and we're going to do an analysis. Now, the question comes for us is, uh, what's the purpose of this fish? It is actually helpful to find out a very specific DNA sequence that is present in the chromosome and it is useful in different uh, purposes also. It can be used to identify bacterial pathogen, any bacteria is there or what. And if anybody is going to have some genetic abnormalities uh, like uh, gene fusions or aneuploidy situation uh, like polyploidy, whatever it is, you can find out to rule out the problems, uh, all these things and diagnosis of any genetic diseases, then definitely you can go and for uh, fluorescent in situ hybridization which is an important technique. Uh, the next important thing is spectroscopy. Yes you can learn any one of the spectroscopy. So I'm going to list out some of the spectroscopy. So UV visible spectroscopy, mass spectroscopy, circular dichotisms, uh, AAS, NMR and IR. I would suggest if you know mass or UV or IR along with it's not necessary a biologist should know circular dichotism. So if you know it's very good enough you can go in for spectroscopy also. The next one is chromatography technique. There are many type of chromatography techniques like uh, paper chromatography, thin layer chromatography, ion exchange chromatography, affinity, HPL. So I would suggest learning HPLC first when you are going in for very specifically if you want to go in for some company related jobs, biotechnology, biopharma company, quality control, then definitely you need to know HPLC also. The last important one is cell based assays. So if you if you wanted to go in for very specifically oncology or cell based uh, research, then definitely you need to know certain techniques. During cell based assay, we used to study how the cellular mechanism works. There are a lot of techniques that are available and the application of learning the cell based assay is you can go in for toxicity studies and you can go for cytotoxic assays. Apoptosis, cancer you can study, protein assays, mechanism of action and what is the drug potency. So this is going to be the last type of technique that you need to know. So if we have to summarize the entire technique, I would start off with learning from PCR because PCR is very, very important. Then going for gel electrophoresis and blotting technique, ELISA, gene cloning, uh, flow cytometry, FISH, spectroscopy, chromatography and cell based assay. So these are some of the most important technique that is going to be in greater demand even after 10 years also. If you are a fresher or even you are in your master's or you've completed master's and if you're looking for a job or if you're looking for entering into a research then I would suggest all the top 10 mandatory lab techniques for all of you so this is all about it thank you all of you for your time and I'm going to meet you back again in another video thank you all of you